My name is Andrew McGowan. I'm a musician and athlete who geeks out on fashion, art, and great food. I spent time working with elite performers, repairing instruments for major symphony musicians, training for marathons, and designing wardrobes from everyone from freshman college students to big city lawyers. Trequartista is the Italian word for playmaker and is used to describe a particularly creative role on the soccer pitch, typically behind the central striker. And as the musical Trequartista, I aim to kickstart conversations about topics and areas that I think are underrated, underdiscussed, or particularly important to a sustainable high octane life. This is the Musical Trek Artista, the podcast. Good morning, everybody. Today, I wanted to talk about the importance of getting high quality sleep. And I bet there's a lot of people that are getting upset about this right now because it's like, Andrew, I do all of this work during the day. I want to have a social life. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I know what you mean. I spent 20 years on that mentality, <laughs> literally since I was five years old. Um, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'll get what I want to do done now, and it's going to be great. And quite frankly, that makes a lot of things really unsustainable. Uh, sleep is really necessary for your body to properly insulate neural pathways that allow you to do the things that you do at a high quality level. And so if we're talking about a relentless pursuit of quality, then sleep is necessary. Michael Jordan and Tom Brady and Simone Biles and uh, Carly Lloyd and Serena Williams and super athletes like that um, don't do what they do because they decided to practice instead of not sleeping. It's because they practiced first thing in the morning really intentionally for a really intense period of time and then decompressed a shitload and then slept. And slept really, really well and ate really, really clean. And when you ask athletes about those kinds of things, that's what they tell you, is that it's about really intense practicing when your brain is at its freshest, and then, and that, and that's why a lot of folks run in the morning outside of like just it being easier to do that because climate in a lot of places. But really intense training early, great hydration, clean nutrition, huge decompression, and high quality sleep. And so it's really helpful for us to be able to pursue that in our personal lives, because. If you're like me and you're a musician or if um, you have a job where you make things or fix things, it's really great to be able to work at your best. Or if you do an analysis type job or if you're an accountant or if you're a computer programmer, you will do all of those things better if you have slept more. One of my favorite quotes is from the composer Dmitry Shostakovich where he said, I hate the idea of composers staying up late into the night to finish this work of art, right during the day. Nighttime is for sleeping. <laughs> and I love that, because he's absolutely right. Uh, yeah, your evening should be, if you work better in the evening, yeah, do that. But um, you should take your evenings to hang with your friends, or play games, and relax, decompress, and then go sleep. It's really great for you. Or if you're somebody who likes to work out before bed, go work out before bed. Whatever. Uh, in an interview Quentin Tarantino did recently, he talked about how um, for a lot of his young life, he used to write in the evenings. And then he realized, oh, I'm a professional. I should write during the day. And then he started writing during the day. And not only did he find that he got more done because his brain was more refreshed, but uh, he was able to spend more time decompressing and therefore slept better. And so having something to unwind you before you go to sleep is really, really important because you want to go to sleep relaxed. The more stressed out you are, the more tense you are before bed, the harder it's going to be to go to sleep. And I have uh, a really recent anecdote about this, actually. So uh, when I took my theory placement exam uh, for my master's degree to see if I uh, was proficient in music theory, which I am, uh the the test was from 7.15 p.m. until 10.15 p.m., and I'm usually in bed by 11. And so I got out at about 11.15, talked with a few people about how the test went, like right afterwards, then went and bought milk because I was out and went straight to bed. 
and I had the worst time trying to fall asleep because I was so nervous and I was so tense and I had more proficiencies the next day and I had more GA orientation the next day and it was just too much going on. And if I had taken the time, you know, just like watch a little Netflix and stretch, because you can do both at the same time, right? Um, before bed, I probably would have fallen asleep a lot easier. Or if I had listened to music while I stretched. And I'm I'm a big fan of the stretching before bed because it allows your muscles to really lengthen and relax. And uh, it incorporates active decompression into your day right before you're about to do the most restful thing you're probably going to do all day. Which is sleep, right? Uh, and sleep isn't something we can compromise on. This is something I have a, a, a huge problem with because there's so many things I want to do every day. But you really need to be clocking like seven to eight hours of sleep every day. And I know that that's really tough for a lot of folks. And the question I would ask is, can you be more intense and more intentional and try to do more with less time during the day in order to sleep more later? And this isn't saying like, don't hang with your friends or don't play board games or don't watch Netflix or whatever. No, nah, you need that too. You got to have things to decompress. You got to have fun or or like you're going to get burnt out really fast. But the other pillar to not burning out is making sure you're properly rested and that things can be, uh, the, the nerve endings in your brain can be insulated properly enough to let those things fire faster. And so if you can practice really intensely, even if it's a shorter amount of time, and then rest really, really effectively, you're going to make improvements faster. So, okay, quantity Let's say quantity is there. I've been at that point a lot where I've slept seven to eight hours a day and I don't feel like it's really improving anything and I don't necessarily feel rested. Well, the next thing to ask is, is the quality of sleep you're getting very good? And uh, one of the, firstly, one of the best things you can do to improve the quality of your sleep is ha like make sure you've moved during the day. So we've, we've decompressed before bed, which allows us to fall asleep faster. But... If we've been active at all, and I'm not saying, like, go run marathons. I'm saying, like, go for a walk or, like, maybe ride a bike a little bit. Or if you go to the gym, go to the gym. And if it's rest day, it's rest day. Uh, but uh, being in a place where you've activated your body, that means you've put work in it and your body needs to recover from that and so that will facilitate helping you sleep as well as all of the benefits for um, great emotional health uh, and boosting the chemicals that help you feel happy in your brain like endorphins and um, fighting off uh, nasties in your immune system which working out is great for all of that coexists all of that is symbiotic it's beneficial for itself and so that will tie back into you being able to sleep better too because your body's like, okay, we tired, we need rest. Great step one. So decompress, activate your body during the day. What else can we do? Um, Tom Brady talks a lot about how um, one of the big sleep things he does is he doesn't keep his phone in his bedroom. Like he has a no bedroom policy for his phone. And especially because we're so bombarded with uh, emails and stuff, I think that's really, really great because it creates that separation and it allows you to get away from all of the distractions of the day and really, really de-stress. And also, um, the blue light that comes out of your phone, the blue and white lights that come out of your phone and computer and stuff, and, and in a lot of cases, TVs, um, your body realizes things before you do. And so even though in your brain you know that's not the sun, your body interprets it as the sun. And it, it's wacky for your circadian rhythms. And so uh, trying to, and that's the power of dark mode, right? Is So you can um, be less damaging on your body as uh, things get later in the day. And that's all great, but um, dark mode plus like a no phones in the bedroom policy, I found personally over the course of the last month has dramatically increased increased the quality of my sleep and so this can get really weird right because what if you don't live by yourself or don't live um in a place where you feel comfortable leaving your phone outside the bedroom what could you do instead well i mean shutting it off is a great idea i suggest investing in an alarm clock and then once your phone's off it's off 
And this takes a lot of self-discipline. Or maybe you can like shove it in uh, your sock drawer or something. Just get it out the way. Get it out the way so you're not thinking about it and it's not bugging you. And you you have to create that boundary with your phone. Otherwise, that uh, relationship can get really codependent really fast. Because the last thing you want to be doing is browsing Instagram before bed. And maybe Instagram is really, really decompressing for you. And so, great. Do that on the couch. And then when it's time for bed, go put your phone away. Decompress a little bit actively, like stretch a little bit and go to bed. Um, And this feeds into the next thing, which is a gray before bed routine. If you can develop a gray before bed routine, even if it's 15 minutes, what you're able to do is tell your body, hey, it's time to go to bed. And your body will real, it will interpret those chemical signals it's getting from whatever your routine is. It's like, oh, this is what we do before bed. And if you're incredibly intentional about that, you will find that going to sleep and staying asleep is far, far easier. So the, my big stretch ha- session of the day is right before bed. It's anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much activity I've done. And I promise you, every day I stretch before bed, my sleep is better. And part of that is the decompression. And part of that is I've made it such a regular activity that my body realizes, oh, hey, it's time to go to bed. And then my sleep is improved. Because my body has been given the signal, hey, this is what we're going to do, and has time to prep for that. And so the time that some folks would spend tossing and turning in bed that I don't really get because I'm incredibly exhausted from the amount of things I've been doing that day is spent during my stretching time where my body is made completely relaxed, I've unwound, and I can go to bed hopefully pretty stress-free. And there's no phone in the bedroom, so that helps too. The next thing is figure out your optimal sleep environment. Well, what does this mean? Um, It means you should try to strive to sleep in the climate that is, or the environment that is best for you to sleep in. So if you prefer to sleep really hot, you should make sure that you are going to sleep and be very, very hot. If you're like me and You sleep best when the room is cold and you have a bajillion blankets and you are wrapped up in a bed burrito. Then make sure that that happens. Uh, I had a couple of days this summer. Um, I don't have central air where I'm living right now. And so one of the really interesting things is that like I had some days this summer where it was like my sleep was objectively terrible. And it was hard for me to get to sleep because it was just so hot. Even though I stretched and even though my phone wasn't in the room and even though I was exhausted. And I wasn't stressed. It was just not a great environment for me to be sleeping in. And so by dialing the environment to exactly where you need it to be, so in my case, freaking cold, uh, going to sleep and staying asleep became much, much easier. And I need to relook on some of the studies about this because I find them really fascinating to read. But unless I'm mistaken... The vast majority of people sleep better in bed burrito mode in a room that's really, really cold. And so the point isn't to say, oh, you'll sleep better if you're cold. It's uh, more that in a cold environment with a hyper-insulated body heat as a result of blankets or um, puppies or whatever you sleep with, um, that is optimal for... uh, sleep. And if you think about like the vast primal majority of human history, like when we were sleeping in caves and huddled up all next to each other so we didn't freeze, that's probably what was happening. Because I mean, even in areas like Africa, where uh, there's lots of deserts and savannas and stuff, while it absolutely bakes during the day, gets frigid at nighttime. Because there's not a lot retaining the heat from the day. And so I would suggest looking into those kinds of things too. And if you are thoroughly decompressed, well hydrated, obviously well nourished, um, that will all contribute to great sleep also. The other thing to be aware of is your caffeine intake. And this is something that uh, I've had some wacky relationships with over the course of my life because there have been times where my uh, caffeine intake has been redonkulously high to the point where I probably needed to be concerned for my kidneys 
and other times where it's been really, really low. And so what does that mean in the grand scheme of uh, impacting your sleep? Because caffeine is going to keep you awake, right? Well, if you are dramatically underslept, um, caffeine will make no difference because your body needs to rest and it will shut down when it's had too much or when it's like when it's at a point where things aren't working anymore and it said like we've done too much today I must rest it will shut down I had a point during my junior year of my bachelor's degree where if I sat down I would fall asleep because I was sleeping on average two hours a night and I was pulling at least one all-nighter a week and I was drinking 108 ounces of coffee every day and I wish I was exaggerating so what does that mean in the grand scheme of stuff? Well, if you're in a position like I am where you're able to sleep seven to eight hours a day and you're pretty decompressed and you're pretty well nourished and you're pretty well hydrated and maybe you could afford to like have some more fun and do more decompressing activities, but in the grand scheme of things, stuff isn't too bad uh, and you're pretty active and you don't keep your phone in the bedroom, how does caffeine really impact stuff? Well, in the grand scheme of things, uh, quite a bit more than you'd think. So I I prefer to drink espresso as opposed to like regular drip coffee. Um, cold brew is nice though. Um, but I just I I developed a taste for uh, espresso over the course of the last couple of years, and so um, because the caffeine amount the caffeine is so concentrated in espresso, I need to be really conscientious about when I'm deciding to drink that. And it's sometimes really important for me during the day to be able to have that extra boost of focus, that stimulant that I really need. Uh, and so having uh, green tea later in the day as a way of um, caffeinating. Well, and, and, and this is the important part to say where um, the way you introduce caffeine to your body uh, can make things or make the physiological reactions pretty different. So uh, what green tea does uh, I don't remember exactly what the molecule is, but so uh, caffeine in green tea is more gradually released into the bloodstream than coffee. Coffee is much faster. And so in the morning, it's usually espresso for me. And then in the afternoon, green tea is the way to go. If I plan on drinking espresso or a cold brew or something in the afternoon, I want it for me, the bet, my best bet is before 4 p.m. And the reason for that is, is, uh, any time after that and the release of caffeine into my bloodstream before it recycles out, unless I go on a nuts workout in the evening, which I'm not really doing tons right now because most of my running is in the morning, uh, the caffeine will be released into my bloodstream to a point where it's impacting my ability to go to sleep at night. And that's a problem because we want to be optimally rested. And so... If we do all of these things, we can really set that great sleep foundation, that great rest foundation for us to catapult ourselves into our week and pursue our careers, our goals, our hobbies, our friendships, our romantic relationships, and everything else we do with intensity and intention in that relentless pursuit of high-quality, high-octane living. It's so important. Uh, I don't like the analogy of, oh, you got to put gas in the tank for things to happen. Human gas is so much more complex than car gas because we need to decompress physically and emotionally. We need to decompress mentally. We need to rest through sleep and through actively not sleeping. What I mean by that is uh, when people talk about meditation, it's act like an active rest rebooting of your mind in which you are resting but not sleeping and that's really 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 great for physical health um I, please go look up uh resources on transcendental meditation i wish i had more of them uh i know a few practitioners of it very famously um jerry seinfeld tom papa are transcendental meditation people and um some of the experts that have studied it have said everything for it is the equivalent to uh, an extra seven hours of sleep every day. And transcendental meditation is about like sitting quietly, trying to connect to – this is going to get really hippy-dippy, but like trying to connect to the energy of the universe for about 20 minutes. And what that – for me, what that means is is like – 
sitting or lying down in a room with not loads going on, not a lot of distractions. I set a timer for 20 minutes, and I try to focus on just my breathing and being blank and being mindful of how I'm feeling about things. And it really does make a difference. Uh, My friend Jeremy Wilson, the uh, professor of trombone at Vanderbilt University, um, once said to me that the days that he feels he doesn't have time to meditate are the days he needs to meditate more. And so meditation is a great supplement to sleep, but I I think you'll find that folks who meditate uh, during the day, whether it's in the evening or in the morning or in the afternoon, um, because you've made a connection with active decompression, uh, that will also help boost the quality of your sleep. And so with all of this being said, please go get rested. That's all for this week. Thanks so much. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Musical Trick Artista, the podcast. You can find us online at mcgowanmusic.com or listen on your favorite podcast platform. You can also visit us at Andrew McGowan on YouTube or Music McGowan on Instagram.